Steve Harlife, Captain Albert are teaching here. Today's video, we're going to be actually showing you the hooks that we use and how to actually hook the crabs. Um, when doing crab fishing, a lot of times people like to rip them apart, chop them up and all of that, which is cool. However, I've also always seen where those crabs that are done like that, if they're not picked up by a fish pretty quickly, that they get baited out. A lot of uh, bait fish will still be out there during the cold water and suck all the meat right out of the, the shell of the crab and stuff like that. So by cutting them up, I really, that's, I really don't prefer that. I like to leave my crabs whole. But a lot of times too, people say, well, when you're casting out, you flick them off because you don't have enough bite into it. They really don't want to kill the crab when they're using live crab. So I'm gonna show you a few techniques on how to use your hooks and how to hook the live crab so that way they stay alive. But also too, that they still put out scent because obviously you want to get the scent out there so these drum can find your fish. Now, here's the tricky part. You gotta be careful because these crabs, they will pinch you and they will, they can hurt you pretty bad and that would be a bad thing to do while you're out there fishing. It can be embarrassing sometimes. It's happened to me, I'm good. I'll fish another day, but I'm trying to save you a little, little help on that. All right, so. This is the kind of size that I like to use myself. It's about four inches across, and obviously it's still alive. Now, the cool thing about this is what I like to do is I like to, since this crab is missing one pincher, what I tend to do is I'll start putting my hooks on this side, so that way it kind of, so it'll be sucked up a lot easier. Okay, now, I'm still real careful because even though it's a small one, that is still a pincher that can get you. So, with my hook here, and right now I've got the kale hook, right here in the shell, as you can see, I'm going to start pushing down, but I'm wiggling it back and forth like that with a little bit of pressure. Okay, and you can see it already starting to penetrate nice and slow. All right, by doing it nice and slow ensures you don't break through and hook yourself on the opposite end. Okay. Kind of hard doing it like this when I'm showing you, but I'll get it in there. Okay. And as you can see right there, right on the inside of the shell and the tip of my thumb, it's already starting to puncture through. Okay. And you just keep drilling back and forth. And this is kind of the reason why I like the bigger hooks too. If you go with too small of a hook, you're not gonna be able to pull it through without cracking the shell. You're gonna to put too much pressure on it. All right, so now that I've got it through, there he is. So, and what tends to happen too is as he's trying to swim away, he'll occasionally get this cable caught in his claw, and which is cool because then his claw is kind of tied up. <laughs> Since his claw is, you know, biting on the cable or biting on your mono, he'll be tied up and he won't go anywhere. And with this one too, whoop, okay, well there goes the claw. He ended up dropping it all on his own. But now, he's gonna be swimming, as you can tell. Look, he's trying to get away from it. And right here, like I said, I'll end up breaking that end off just to get a little more scent out of the crab. Just like that. See, and it's not enough to, to kill them, but it's enough to get a, a lot of the scent out of the crab into the current, and that's one way to do it. Now, just because I did it with the kale hook, I'll still be able to do it with the J hook and the circle hook, and this is the way I would normally do it. Um, 
there's another way that guys like to do, and uh, they'll what they'll do is they'll come behind this hi, um, hind hinge on your leg, and they'll start to wean it through. And again, it's the same way. You wiggle it back and forth. A little bit of pressure and boom there you go now I've got it all the way through and these are the two best ways that I have enjoyed catching a lot of big drum and hooking them just like this with live bait so goodbye from Mr. Crab who's gonna be my bait here in about 20 minutes and uh, we'll see how it goes Roar. all right guys so I showed y'all how we hook up our live crab um, if you don't, if you don't feel very confident in using the crab with the pinchers on, you can break them off, but try not to break it off to where the whole muscle mass behind the pincher comes out of the bait. Uh, the reason for that is because they end up dying really quick, and then you don't get the same productivity if you keep it alive. Okay. All right. So with this one, the way to do it is right here on that joint. You will see where it has a little connection point. What I like to do is right there, I'm going to put pressure pushing in this way while my thumb is pulling up the opposite way. Right there, boom. Nice little simple break and the crab will stay very, very much alive, but it will allow you to handle it without getting pinched. Because telling you, that pincher is no fun. So. Tis the season for using blue crabs, but doesn't mean you have to be blue at the same time. So watch out with that pincher and have some fun. And we'll see you out. A little bit overkill, you never know. Might try it someday because you always find big crab in big tiger sharks. Might, may not be too far from the truth. All right, guys. So again. That was a quick little way on how to disable the crabs, but also keeping them alive so that way you can use for bait in your fishing trip. All right, how to push the hook through without cracking the shell of the crab. When you don't crack the shell of the crab, it's actually very good in that area because now you can cast it out and still get a good distance without it falling off the hook. And again, we need to hit 2,000 subscribers. So we can give an SX Raptor away with a Vexen 9 foot inshore series rod, which are phenomenally great rods. They're tearing up the gators in Florida with them. I've taken them offshore and I put them on some Monster Snapper. I'm just having a little trouble trying to move the video over from the iPhone that we had it to the um, LG5 that I'm now using. So again, when you hit 2000 subscribers, so we can do this giveaway, pass the word to your friends, get them to subscribe, get your kids to subscribe because everything will help us out in the long run, which means in turn we can pay it forward to help y'all out. Thank you again. Y'all have a great weekend, and we'll see y'all again.